Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Retail Compliance, How to Lower Costs, Improve Sales, and Gain a Competitive Advantage. We're excited to have you. My name is Megan Billingsley and I'll be moderating today's event. We're also thrilled to be joined today by Dwight Hayes, Executive Director of Enterprise Sales Retail at ArcBest, and Brent Dura, Director of Customer Solutions at ArcBest. In this presentation, our speakers will discuss the challenges vendors face as they try to meet the increasingly strict shipping and delivery requirements of major retailers. The consequences of non-compliance are significant, from profit-draining chargebacks to removal from a retailer's assortment altogether. But our speakers will outline specific steps vendors can take to dramatically improve compliance, while increasing revenue and even becoming a preferred vendor. But before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items. Please note the slides will advance automatically throughout the presentation. To enlarge the slides, click the Enlarge Slides button located in the top right corner of your presentation window. If you need technical assistance, click on the Help widget located on the bottom left corner of your console. We encourage you to submit questions at any time throughout the presentation using the Q&A widget at the bottom of your console. We'll answer as many questions as we can at the end of this presentation. After the presentation, you'll also be able to access the on-demand recording of the webinar using the same link from today's live event. Let's start with an overview of what we will cover during today's presentation. First, we'll discuss what retail compliance is. Next, we'll discuss chargebacks and vendor scorecards. After that, we'll talk about what's happening at retail and why having an efficient and cost-effective supply chain is critical for a retailer. What should vendors do to be part of the solution? Afterwards, we'll talk about how logistics providers can be partners in compliance. Finally, we'll introduce you to ArcBest's Retail Plus program and take your questions. Now, I'll hand it over to Brent and Dwight. Thanks for the introduction, Megan. We're really excited about this opportunity. We appreciate the opportunity to be here today and talk a little bit more about retail compliance. Compliance can be difficult for vendors because every retailer has a unique set of rules and their verbiage is slightly different, although it may seem the same thing. For example, there's OTIF, on time in full, STA, ship to arrive, PAD, planned arrive date, etc., etc., etc. The acronyms are different, but the concepts are basically the same. Brent, if I could interject here, I'd also say as a logistics provider, it's important for us to understand when the clock stops. Is it when the product is received? Is it when it, we're in gate? Is it when the appointment is actually set? As a logistics provider, it's critical that we understand this, and that's why retail compliance is so important um, in our space. Great point, Dwight. I couldn't agree more. The specific details in each retailer's compliance or routing guide vary, but they tend to fall into the same categories. It boils down to being able to manage lead time, provide an accurate requested delivery date, submit for a compliant appointment, and then deliver to the appointment that was granted. While this sounds simple, the slight differences in each program makes becoming compliant feel like a moving target. Non-compliance actually does not just affect the supplier. The common differences relate to the timing associated with each of these elements. For example, some retailers provide some very specific ship dates while others give specific lead time. On the other hand, it does require a specific delivery date, commonly referred to as an RDD, when others will provide a delivery window and RDW. That's right. Then there's the combination of plus or minus dates. It's not uncommon for retailers to wrap time around a specific date. So they'll give us Friday, and then they want us to deliver either on Thursday, Friday, or Monday. So that's not unusual. So knowing the specific service level agreements associated with each retailer and how to comply with them is essential to the success of any retail compliance program. All right, so understanding chargebacks. Well, chargebacks are fees retailers charge when vendors are non-compliant with their requirements. I'm sure we're all very familiar with that. These fees are typically deducted directly from the invoice. So vendors receive payments that are, in less, that are less than the amount that they billed or expected to receive. A chargeback can be a big hit to the bottom line, really cuts into revenue, top line, all of those things because it's unexpected. More importantly, it can impact product placement. 
Brent, if I could add some further color to that, there's a bigger picture at play here. The retailer wants to avoid stockouts. If they do not have the product on the shelf, they can't sell it. Therefore, there's a loss of sales. The bigger piece of it is understanding the consumer behavior. If the consumer can't buy the product there, they're going to go somewhere else, whether it's online or in a brick and mortar store. It also, there's the reduction in inventory cost for the retailer. It's about precision. And we'll talk further about that as we move forward into our discussion today. But really, it, there's a big picture. Compliance and, and chargebacks are a big piece of this, but it's understanding from a retail perspective what they're expecting, what they want, and when they want it. It truly is a partnership between the retailer, the vendor, the provider. We're all working together for a common goal, which is to get freight to destination within the time that is most optimal for the retailer and ultimately the consumer. I'll also add it's about precision and flow. Similar to what the automotive industry went through a few years ago with just-in-time deliveries, the retailer is in an evolution as well. Early is as bad as late. Scorecards are a big part of the retail compliance conversation. More retailers are using scorecards to track vendors' compliance over time, looking for the right understanding and commitment from the vendor, ensuring they understand the importance and the impact of hitting the delivery window is. It is important to know that scorecards are designed to help vendors make progress. Um, so, in fact, retailers will look for evidence that the vendor is making efforts to improve, which should result in fewer chargebacks, better product placement, either on the website or on the shelf, and ultimately improved sales. It's about eliminating costs within the supply chain, getting freight to destination to deliver to consumers as fast as possible. From a retailer's point of view, I think it's better to understand the big picture of what they are going through. The retail world is in an evolution. They are trying to increase online sales and determine the evolution of the brick and mortar stores. They're looking to get to market faster with less cost, more predictability and reliability for the customers. Positioning sales to occur on or before the freight is scheduled to arrive into their DCs or stores. For successful vendors, this allows them to be the vendor of choice with the opportunity of viable shelf space and an online presence in a digital world. From a vendor perspective, it is like buying real estate in the store or a bigger presence online. They want to be on an end cap or in an action alley. This allows them to sell their product more efficiently and become a better vendor of choice as Brenton mentioned earlier. We live in an omni-channel world. Customers want what they want when they want it. The successful retailers will be the ones who have the multiple channels and have been able to reinvent themselves in the digital space. The ultimate driver of the retail environment today is the consumer. The consumers have greater expectations than ever before. It's about the consumer experience. This is driving the entire supply chain of the major retailers. A retailer needs to be ready for the shopper at any time and at any place, whether that's a direct delivery from an e-commerce order or from the shelf when they choose to drop into a physical store or in the parking lot of a store. When an e-commerce e order can be received faster locally, that's the decision they make. In essence, it's about the consumer experience and making sure the shopper has the product available to them with the ultimate opportunity to buy the product when they want it and where they want it. The retail supply chain is changing. With the omni-channel world that we live in, this has created new ways for retailers to develop fulfillment. This actually creates an opportunity called omni-channel fulfillment. To better understand this in the e-commerce world, some brick and mortar stores are actually fulfilling orders through their stores. For instance, if Brent decides to buy a TV from a major retailer, it actually may not be fulfilled from the traditional DC. It could actually be fulfilled from the store down the road from his house. If you're a retailer operating brick and mortar stores and offering online shopping, you must have a totally integrated supply chain. Retailers must continue to move products to distribution centers to get them to the stores. This will allow this omni-channel experience. Plus, the new service will meld the store in online fulfillment. Product availability is key to making sure the retailers drive their brand value. If consumers don't believe they can't rely on a retailer to meet their needs, as we discussed earlier, they're going to shop somewhere else.
creating options in this omni-channel world is the key to making a great customer experience. The retailers are under pressure. You can see the proof of the number of retail bankruptcies over the last couple years. Consumers are requiring retailers to deliver product when and where they want to receive it at a price that's market competitive, including delivery cost. So as consumers become more comfortable with the ordering and delivering of all categories of product, it will become even more important for them to redefine their market strategy. Retailers who figure out how to transform themselves in this digital space will be the ones that are successful and combine their brick and mortar operations along with a great online digital experience. The brick and mortar retailer has to reinvent themselves to be a viable option in the digital space. If they don't do this, they will find themselves in a very precarious situation. And this could affect the retailer, vendor, and the consumer. There are just too many options to choose from in today's omni-channel world. Brendan, retail compliance, I know we've discussed the vendor's role, but how about giving your thoughts on how they can assist further in a strong retailer and customer experience? Sure. The consumer is setting the tone. They get to decide when they buy and who they buy from. We've already established that. So having an efficient supply chain is absolutely critical to the survival of a retailer today. That means vendors must be proactive in their approach to developing their compliance program. That starts with knowing the rules of engagement. So getting to know your buyer and working with a provider who has experience in the space. So do your homework, ask for references, and make sure they put their money where their mouth is. From there, vendors and providers must work together to solve this complex problem. They must learn from one another. That means understanding and having current routing guides, learning from a past experience, both the vendor and the, the carrier, and then looking for ways to stay ahead or to adapt to the demands of the retail space. It's ever-changing. So you have to stay relevant and current with what's going on in the space. So that gets us into how to improve your compliance program. First, build a culture of compliance. That means that everyone within the organi organization needs to understand what it means to be compliant and are committed to getting that done. Second, track the details. Make sure you understand those pivotal points within the supply chain that will either make you successful or create a failure. Then keep good records. You have to be able to document what took place so that if a failure occurs, you have the records that you need to protect yourself. Then stay up to date on the retailer's policies. They always are changing. So make sure that you have the most recent routing guide and that you're communicating with your provider who may be learning from other customers that they're dealing with. So that's important, so stay close to them. And then choose a logistics provider with retail experience. Getting into this space isn't easy, and understanding all the moving targets and all the SLAs is very difficult. It takes time, so you need somebody that has experience. So when possible, build a strong relationship with your buyer. Make sure you're integrated correctly with the retailer from the beginning. Understand their vendor portal and make sure your company is properly set up within it. That's essential. Ensure your product is matched to the right mode of transportation and your transportation providers are properly integrated with the retailer. That's EDI and API requirements. That's how we communicate in this day and age. Understand the retailer's service level agreements, PO requirements, accurate inventory estimates, and order to ship date capabilities. All of that's extremely important. And there's a lot there, and that's why having a compliance program is so important. Dwight? Brent, if I could actually simplify that, in the conversations that I've had with some of the major retailers and even some of the major vendors, it boils down to this. The retailer wants what they order and when they need it. Chargebacks. That's where this conversation leads to. The number one reason for chargebacks is late or early deliveries. By partnering with a logistics provider with significant retail experience, you can attack this, this issue head on. That's why it's so critical to have a provider who's committed to staying current, relevant in this space, and is willing to provide end-to-end -end visibility. You gotta see it from beginning to end. That's where ArcBest has invested a lot of time and effort in technology, systems, and partnerships, solving for this specific need. Dwight, I think you can speak directly to that. Sure. There are a few things that we can do with any logistics provider that will greatly improve your chances of being compliant with major retailers. Accuracies are key. 
if we have criti uh, this critical piece of information, we can actually drive and thread the needle to make sure the precision deliveries are met and you are compliant with your product into the retailer. Here are a few. Accurate purchase orders. If we have accurate purchase orders on the BOL, we can certainly make sure that we actually set the automation of the delivery schedule into the retailer's portal. Accurate delivery windows. We need this visibility and so we can drive the bus for you. Sustainable lead time, very critical. If we have that level of lead time, it allows us to better directly manage the process and provide visibility to our consumers throughout the network. At ArcBest, we are now proud to introduce Retail Plus. We've been working diligently over the last two years to improve our process to meet the needs of the vendor and the retail. Through this creation of Retail Plus, it was ultimately a vision utilizing one of our core values of collaboration. With this, meeting with some of our strategic customers, creating the Retail Customer Advisory Board. Along with that, we had internal departments that included customer solutions, technology, operation, and sales. What it will provide is enhanced operational processes, visibility, and performance to meet and accommodate supplier compliance. After two years of preparation and the input of our customer advisory board, we have developed Retail Plus. Brent, what do you think about giving us a peek under the hood of how we develop some of these enhanced processes? You bet. So we, we started with improving our processes. Uh, what do I mean by that is that we have what we refer to are the four absolutes. And you've already heard us talk about some of these, but I just want to be very specific with them. Provide an accurate PO. That is essential. There's so many times where we get to destination and we're trying to make an appointment only to find out that the PO that we've been given isn't accurate and it can't be accepted. So we have to remove that from the trailer and that adds time and cost. Secondly, list the RDD on the bill of lading. Requested delivery dates are extremely important. We have to know what we're targeting. So having that on the bill of lading is essential. Give sufficient transit time. Make sure that we have enough time to get it to destination and on the trailer request the appointment in time to make the appointment. And then ship to hit the front end of the window. In most cases, retailers are giving you a window to hit or at least they're telling you the earliest you can deliver. Make sure you're aiming at that when you're calculating your ship date. So getting into what we've actually developed and where we spend a lot of our time. First, we developed a ship date calculator. We want to make it as simple for our customers as possible. So if we've created a calculator, depending on who you're shipping to, it calculates the right window based on the day you've been given. It then will take into consideration the transit time that we have and calculate a ship date that takes transit and that window into consideration when suggesting an accurate ship date. We've also tried to make it simple for our service centers. We want to make sure that there isn't any guesswork involved anymore. So what we've done is we've developed a recommended carrier requested delivery date. Why is that important? In the LTL environment, a lot of times we end up with a lot of freight on a trailer that had to have multiple days. And we're trying to optimize the compliance for that trailer and all of those shipments. So instead of allowing that to be up to the decision of a service center clerk, we're actually recommending the right day based on what we see on the trailer. So the system is telling them the day that's going to be most compliant for all of those shipments on that trailer. Then we've created end-to-end -end visibility. We used all those data points that we've captured along the way when we pick up, the day and time that we actually requested an appointment, the date that we requested, and the appointment we received. And then we make that visible to you online so that you can see that for yourself. End-to-end -end visibility is essential, and we're capturing that information so that you can use that with the retailer if it is required. So when you roll all of that up, the intent is to simplify the process and to improve compliance for our vendors and our retailers. So once your organization is consistently compliant, you can put that energy into improving your relationships with your retailers. This gives you the opportunity to become a preferred vendor. And in most cases, being a preferred vendor means that you have advantages and benefits that wouldn't otherwise be available to you. 
In summary, there are some thoughts we'd like you to take away. Retail Plus has been launched. We have to be nimble, and remember as a logistics company, we're an extension of your supply chain. We all win, and ArcBest is here to assist in helping our strategic customers as well as future clients needing improvement in retail compliance. Brent, any closing thoughts? I'll close with this, Dwight. So, ArcBest Retail Plus leverages technology and best practices to help retail vendors become a preferred partner. Ultimately, that's what we set out to do, to create a compliance program designed by vendors for vendors. Thank you, Dwight and Brent. That was an informative and helpful presentation. We have a few minutes left and several questions from the audience, so we'll just kick it off right here. What does it take generally to become a preferred vendor to a retailer? Why does it matter? In our opinion, choosing a, a successful logistics provider is key. We believe that if a customer has a good compliance score or a vendor has a good compliance score, it will allow them to buy better space in the store, improving sales ultimately for the supplier, vendor, and the retailer. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, next question. What are the eligibility requirements for Retail Plus? That's easy. If you're a vendor to one of the retailers, you're eligible. You can contact ArcBest, one of your local account managers, who will onboard you onto the Retail Plus program. They'll walk you through and make sure you understand all the requirements so that it's easy to get started with ArcBest Retail Plus. Fantastic. Thank you. Could you say more about what you mean when you say Retail Plus provides increased visibility? As a retail vendor, what can I see and what am I able to control myself? One of the things we've done at ArcBest as a part of Retail Plus is increase the visibility to our customers and our vendors. Part of that is taking place is on ARCB.com that gives them visibility of when we actually execute the delivery. Absolutely. In addition to when we execute, it's also important to understand when we ask for the appointment and the appointment date that was asked for. That's commonly referred to as the carrier requested delivery date. If you don't have that information, it makes it very hard to combat or refute a financial penalty. We provide that on ARCB.com. So part of the Retail Plus program is that end-to-end -end visibility we've already talked about. Well, that's all the time we have today. A big thanks to today's speakers, Dwight and Brent, and of course, to our audience for joining us. As a reminder, today's webinar will be available on demand and a link will be sent to you after the webinar. Have a great day, everyone.